Dr. C. Ramesh Kumar sir, Principal, Jai Shri Ram College for this program. I extend my warm welcome to Dr. P. Megla Devi, Dean, MBA Department, Jai Shri Ram College of Engineering, who has a big initiative for the program today. My hearty welcome to the chief resource people and speakers of the day, Dr. V. Krishnamurti sir, Associate Professor, Department of Management Studies, Tongo Engineering College, Erol. I extend my warm welcome to Dr. R. Kasilingam sir, Professor, Department of Management Studies, Pondicherry University, Pondicherry. I again welcome our Dr. P. Megla Devi, Dean, MBA, School of Management Studies, Jai Sri Ram Engineering College, Sirapur, to this program. I welcome all the professors who have enrolled for the Faculty Development Program 2022, a structural equation modeling using amounts and research publication. I extend my warm welcome to all my faculty coordinators, friends of MBA Department of Jai Sri Ram College of Engineering, who put their continuous effort in making this event. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you. Now I request our Dean Ma'am to address the gathering. Ma'am, please. Yes, Ma'am. Happy morning to one and all present here. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome all for this one week faculty development program on structural equation modeling using AMOS. First of all, my heartfelt welcome and thanks to our uh, chief guest, Dr. B. Krishnamurti sir and Kaslingam sir for accepting my request for this session. Actually, the need of research is immense and there are lots of areas where our commerce and management faculties has to penetrate. Today, data analytics is having a playing a great role and computer science and other departments of engineering, they are taking our research in hand and they are doing lots and lots in research. And what is our role in research means we have to go with other languages also to learn more and do more research because uh, we know statistics, we know how the interpretation part we know very well, but they are unaware of the interpretation part, but they are doing more research in social science research, medical engineering, even geography oriented researchers and bank databases, all the informations today are only in datas. In infra databases it is stored and the need of research is very important, but the importance is not taken by us as uh, to, to my uh, opinion. We are doing more researches, but the major area is covered by the uh, computer science nowadays. Uh, in the fourth day, I'll explain all the things. And welcome professor for this session. The session today will be handed over, handled by Krishnamurti sir. And I welcome all the participants for this session. Let this six days session give you great immense and ideas and learnings from our college. On behalf of Jay Sri Ram group of institutions, I re re request everybody to use this wonderful opportunity and welcome one and all for this session. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for addressing the gathering. Now I welcome our eminent principal, Dr. C. Ramesh Kumar, sir, to address the gathering. So please. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Monica. Uh, it is uh, my pleasure uh, to uh, join uh, the Department of MBA uh, to uh, attend this uh, five days uh, faculty development program on structural equational modeling using AMOS. The SPSX uh, is an important tool and uh, uh, I invite, uh, I also join hands with this uh, Dean MBA uh, to welcome uh, Dr. Krishna Murthy and Dr. Kalasalingam uh, as a resource person to deliberate on this first day session. This five day sessions, I understood that these are focusing on this AMOS 
uh, the, the structural equation modeling and uh, related to this various case studies. And this all the need of the hour for the MBA department uh, students, uh, faculty members, as well as the executives, those who are working with this uh, data analytics and business uh, model. And uh, this is the right time program for uh, the, uh, the executive and faculty develop, faculty members, uh, those who are handling on the SAMOS and the SPSS uh, related uh, matters. And here I congratulate uh, the Department of Management Study, uh, uh, Dean MBA, and uh, the faculty members, those who are involved in, uh, in this, uh, organizing this program. This also the, the, the eye opener for uh, uh, stepping up uh, the MBA department to go with this uh, data analytics. Because uh, this uh, data analytics as well as uh, uh, artificial intelligence related uh, subjects that are common for computer science engineering as well as uh, this uh, uh, MBA department. So the MBA department need to focus and uh, just like uh, the finance system, marketing as well as HR, this uh, the data analytics and uh, the artificial intelligence related uh, matters also, the department has to step in for uh, getting a good prospects for the students as well as the faculty members. And here, uh, our uh, Jayashira Engineering College, we focusing on uh, not only uh, uh, the teaching learning process practices, uh, we also equipping the students with the best practices and the best innovative uh, practices uh, for them to understand the ground reality of uh, uh, stepping into these various uh, ventures like uh, uh, this data and uh, this advanced studies. Again, okay. I wish all the success uh, to the department and wish you all the success for uh, the great uh, progress of this uh, five-day program. And I invite the participants to replace this Friday program in an effective way uh, to get uh, good uh, inputs. And based on that, you have to explore further for the betterment of the system. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, it's my pleasure to address the gathering about the chief resource person of the day. Dr. V. Krishna Kumar, sir, an eminent scholar, teacher, researcher, has over 24 years of rich experience in teaching management subjects. He is a gold medalist in MBA and NCOM. He has designated and conducted several management development programs for practicing executives. His research purpose on published in reputed journals which are indexed in Scopus. He is recognized as supervisor for guiding PhD scholars in Anna University, Chennai. He has also presented uh, research papers in various international conferences, including IIMS and IITs. He has obtained the funding from various funding agencies like All India Council for Teaching Education, National Human Rights Commission, and so on. He is also actively involved in consultant work for leading corporates. He is a reviewer for 15 international journals. He is acting as a resource person in various workshops and faculty development programs across the country. Krishnamurti sir is also designated and conducted more than 100 workshops relating to memory power, research methods, and soft skills. He is presenting, presently working in our Department of Management Studies, Congo Engineering College, Erod, a reputed technical education institute in, in India. He has received a Best Faculty Award from Congo Engineering College in the year of 2009-2010. For his excellence teaching in the higher education awarded from Aruna International Research Foundation, Best Researcher in Finance Award from Integrates Intelligent Researchers. Excellence teaching in higher education from BK International Research Foundation, PK Das a Best Faculty Award from Nehru College of Arts and Science, Pandatur. Best Faculty from Vivekananda College, Tiruchangoda. He is also awarded from 
Kongo Engineering College for his involvement and participation in research and development activities during the year of 2017 to 18. I am very happy in introducing the chief guest of the day, Dr. V. Krishnamurti sir. Thank you. I wish now the session gets to the Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, whether my voice is audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very fine, sir. Okay, ma okay, madam. Whether you can able to see the PowerPoint presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, madam. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, first, I would like to extend my sincere thanks from bottom of my heart for inviting me as a uh, resource person for uh, this uh, one week uh, virtual workshop on structural equation modeling uh, using AMOS. Uh, first, I would like to extend my sincere thanks from bottom of my heart to the management of this esteemed institutions. Uh, the principal of uh, respected principal, sir. Then uh, I would like to place my sincere thanks to uh, Dr. Uh, Meghra Devi, ma'am, uh, Dean of uh, Dean of Management Studies. I would like to express my sincere thanks to all other uh, coordinators uh, who brought this workshop in a very wonderful way. Uh, uh, today, uh, this is a today's uh, session's agenda. Today we are going to discuss what is research, what are the different approaches of uh, research, what is the research problem, what is review of literature, what is the research design, sampling uh, design, uh, plus uh, instrument uh, design, plus uh, how to select statistical tool, selection of statistical tool. If you have any doubt or clarification, your doubts are always welcome with red carpet. And then I am ready to clarify your doubt. At the end of the session, definitely we'll have some kind of takeaway. Before proceeding with uh, structural equation modeling, probably from tomorrow onwards, structural equation modeling uh, will be conducted. We should know the basics. Without understanding the basics of research, when we discuss uh, structural equation modeling, for example, uh, moderation, mediation, confirmatory factor analysis, construct, uh, naturally, then that will not be good. So if we have some idea with regard to fundamentals of research, rest of the thing is very, very easy, easy. Okay. There is a proverb, king will be respected only in the kingdom. King will be respected only in the kingdom. Leader will be respected only in the organization. Um, whereas fools should be respected only in the house. Whereas knowledgeable person or vidyabari will be respected all over the world. If you take a teaching profession, now the role of teacher has totally changed earlier uh, conduct that is uh, taking class is the main role of the teacher now the, then this has been totally changed the teacher is supposed to do research the teacher is supposed to do consultancy work so that he can be a very good teacher so if you want to do research at least you should know the basic nuances of research then only we can uh, do the research so what is research normally what is research Research is to see what everybody has seen, but uh, to think what nobody else had thought. That is a definition for the term. That is a definition for the term uh, research. What is the research normally? A research means what it's nothing but uh, with the help of research, we can get these benefits. That is creation of new knowledge, or sometimes we can use existing knowledge to create new knowledge. So this could be possible only with the help of some new concepts are methodology and understanding. Okay, so uh, normally before uh, so doing research, what is the first step? First, we should identify the base paper for our research. This is very, very important. Base paper 
is very very important what is base paper base paper means what it is very very important paper in our area for example you may be doing you may be doing research in stress you may be doing research in uh, customer relationship management you may be doing research in payment to source management practice you may be doing research in total quality management or supply chain management or lean management whatever may be your research area first we have to identify the base paper that is very very important what is base paper very important paper in the particular area for example if you take some uh, area there may there will be a, some authors that means he is a authority in the particular uh, area once we know who is authority in the particular area rest of the thing is very simple you can, we can identify the base paper okay how to identify the base paper that is the next question how to identify the base paper normally base paper can be identified by two ways one is number of downloads next one is number of citations and then so normally you might appear about uh, this website called the emeraldinsight.com uh, emerald emeraldinsight.com uh, you might uh, you might aware about this website emeraldinsight.com uh, so kindly uh, you can what you can do is emerald you can go to emeraldinsight.com you can uh, type um, your topic once you type your topic you may you will get several uh, uh, research papers for example when you type when you type customer satisfaction customer satisfaction you will get minimum 1 lakh articles minimum 1 lakh articles so out of 1 lakh article what is our role we are supposed to identify the base paper so when you go through each and every paper yeah, then at the end of the paper you will get this in, this kind of information number of downloads number of people downloaded this paper next one is number of citation number of downloads next one number of uh, citations okay if number of downloads and number of citations are equal in such circumstances what we are supposed to do is we should select only number of uh, citations okay so this is the way by which we should identify the base paper for example let's take uh, uh, stress management if you take stress management the paper written by uday parik uday parik is a authority with regard to stress similarly let's take crm that is maybe a authority similarly let's take service quality that may be authority for example parasuram and sitamal so first we have to identify the uh, base paper this is the first one next what is the research research means what searching repetitively sometimes you can do the extension of uh, previous work you can bring some new innovations okay uh, this is this is a mean for this is the meaning for research why we should do research normally uh, promotion whenever uh, you are aiming for promotion from one cadre to another cadre normally research paper is very very important even now people are talking about research paper uh, in scopus indexed journals that is very very important so always aim for high okay next one now let's take in some institutions for increment purpose uh, every year they are supposed to uh, publish some research paper better job opportunities if you want to get respect among your colleague again you should have uh, so you should have some knowledge uh, relating to uh, research okay uh, so say for example now let's take how to select the research topic normally once we identify the research paper that is a base paper what is the next step next step is we have to identify the research topic how to identify the research topic normally research topic should be identified based on your personal interest or passion or importance or contribution to the field for example you may be interested in finance but don't select uh, marketing related topic sometimes you may be interested in marketing don't select finance related uh, topic and i have seen several scholars might uh, selecting topic just for guide sake that is not a correct one so in the no you should have some real interest in the area for example human resource management if you are interested in human resource management you can identify several topics for example emotional intelligence organizational citizenship behavior human the impact of human resource management practice there are several topics are available so you can select the topic according to your interest that is very very important next one whenever you select some topic the topic should have some newness the topic should be relevant to your field for example the topic should be relevant to your management field that is very very important normally when you are when when we are preparing your research proposals to the funding agencies like aict icssr ugc 
National Human Rights Commission, they are asking newness. Newness means whether your topic, your uh, research is something new, whether your research have some contribution to the uh, society. That is very, very important. Finally, you check the feasibility of your uh, research topic. Feasibility, first time constraint, because normally, let's say, we are supposed to complete entire research within uh, three years. So time constraint plus ethical constraint, then you should ensure organizational support. Organizational support means whether your organization has sufficient database, for example, Emerald database or EBSCO host database, or whether your organization has SPSS, AMOS, uh, EBUs, software. Plus, sometimes when you do experimental research, you can also ensure whether the equipment is available uh, in your department. Kindly uh, ensure this uh, these points before selecting the research before selecting the research topic. Okay. Next one, okay, already we have seen uh, how to identify the base paper. Base paper, I uh, mean, this paper is highest citation paper. With the help of base paper, uh, you can identify who is the authority uh, in the particular area. You can take base paper as a base. You can implement new concept or you can add some variable or you can delete some variable or you can, you can modify some variable so that your research could be something new. Okay. Let's take research. Whenever we do research, first, there are two approaches has been followed all over the world. Uh, what is the research approach? The approach, research approach is, is nothing but the way of dealing with particular problem. The way of dealing with particular problem is said to be a research approach. There are two approaches. One is an inductive approach. Another one is a deductive approach. There are two approaches are, uh, two approaches has been followed. As far as our uh, PhD uh, research is concerned, we should take this directive approach. What is the directive approach? Uh, as far as directive approach is concerned, we will take theory as a base. We will take theory as a base. From the theory, the theory as a base. From the theory, we should develop some hypothesis. You are aware about hypothesis. Hypothesis is nothing but it's a tentative assumption about the population. There are two types of hypothesis. One is null hypothesis, another one is alternate hypothesis. So first we have to select, identify any one other theory. There are several theories in, in your uh, chosen area. Then based on the theory, you can develop hypothesis. Based on your hypothesis, what we can do is you can do some kind of statistical analysis. That is, uh, you can develop questionnaire and then you can go, you can collect data. What you can do is then you can do the analysis. Finally, you can, uh, can, uh, you can do the testing of hypothesis. Finally, you can come to the conclusion that whether hypothesis, certain hypothesis can be accepted or certain hypothesis can be rejected. For example, let's take uh, impact of bonus on salesman performance in the industry. Normally, whenever you are giving bonus to salesman, naturally the performance of the persons uh, in the particular industry will be good. Normally, this is assumptions. So you would like to check uh, impact of bonus on salesman performance in the banking industry. In such circumstances, you take any one of the theory in the particular area, you develop hypothesis, then you can collect the, you can collect the data. Finally, what you can do is you can do the statistical analysis. I have seen several uh, scholars might committed uh, mistakes in applying statistical uh, tool. Normally, it's very, very simple. If you take any statistical tool, any statistical tool, normally any statistical tool, then entire statistics can be classified into two types. One is a parametric test, another one is a non-parametric test. What is parametric and what is non-parametric test? If any statistical test is considering mean as a base, if any statistical test is considering mean as a base means it is a parametric test. If any statistical test is considering median as a base, median as a base means it is a non-parametric, it is a non-parametric uh, test. So normally whenever you do questionnaire, whenever we formulate questionnaire, Questionnaire should be formulated based on the objectives of the study. Then only we can do the statistical analysis. Similarly, whenever we do some statistical analysis, every statistical analysis has some assumptions. We have to check whether the statistical test, whether your data set has some assumptions, whether met assumptions. Then we can do the test. Okay. So what is the directive approach? Take theory. From the theory, develop some hypothesis. From the hypothesis, you can collect some data. Then you can do the statistical analysis. Finally, you can do the statistical test of uh, hypothesis. Then you can write your conclusions. This is a deductive approach. 
What is the next one? Next one is an inductive approach. What is the inductive approach? In case of inductive approach, they, will, they won't take any theory as a base. They will observe something. They will observe something based on the observation. Based on the observation, they will identify the patent. Based on the observation, they will identify the patent. Then based on the patent, they may develop the theory. The main objectives of inductive approach is development of the theory. So when you do research, PhD research, uh, never do this kind of research. It is an inductive research. The best example for inductive research is Maslow hierarchy of needs. Maslow, you might have seen a Maslow hierarchy of uh, needs uh, in motivation, basic need, uh, uh, security need, safety need. So this will comes under inductive approach. How inductive approach? The main objectives of inductive approach is formulate theory. Okay. Now you have uh, identified your uh, base paper. Now you have identified your research approach. What is the next one? Next one is next one is you should define the research problem. Defining the research problem is very very important one. Okay. Let's take here. Once you can define the research problem, let's take uh, let's take one is a problem, another one is a solution. Once once you can identify your research problem, it's very very simple. This is very very important for your research. Most of the researchers are committed a mistakes in identifying the research problem. Based on the research problem only, uh, what you can do, you are going to do the review of literature. Based on the review of literature, you can do the uh, research gap. That is, you can we might identify the research gap. Based on the research gap, based on the research gap, what you can do, you can develop the proposed model. Based on the proposed model, you can develop some research objective. Based on the research objective, you can decide the research design. Based on the research design and research objective, you can formulate research question. Based on the research question, then we can go for data collection. Based on the question that we can do the statistical analysis. So once we commit a mistakes in identifying the problem, and then naturally it will have a cascading effect. It, it's, it will have a, its influence in the rest of the process. So we must be very careful in identification of the research problem. Let's say for example, research problem is a problem in your PhD thesis. It is termed as a statement of the problem. Okay, uh, properly defining the problem is the most important step in the research process. If the research, if you select the wrong problem, the remaining all steps in the marketing research process are wrong. Okay, so how to formulate the research problem? How to formulate the research problem? Just I can give some uh, steps. For example, you would like to. Uh, study the alcoholism then alcoholism that is your topic so what you can do is you can classify your research topic uh, this topic into several subcategory first one may be profile of alcoholism this is one topic next one the causes of alcoholism this is the next one third one uh, the process of becoming an alcoholic fourth one the effect of alcoholism on the family fifth one community attitude towards alcoholism the effectiveness of treatment model okay you are taking one topic that is alcoholism and that is the first one uh, alcoholism then uh, you are dividing this topic into several areas okay these are the possible areas next what we can what we are doing is you are so you are selected you have selected only one topic that is the effect of alcoholism on the family the effects of alcoholism on the family okay you have selected another one uh, topic okay now what you can do is you are raising some research questions what impact has alcoholism on marital relations how does it affect various aspects of children's life what are the effects on the family finance okay this is the research uh, question based on the research question what you can do is you can formulate you can formulate the research objectives for example let's take what may be the research objective to find out the effect of Alcoholism on the family phase on the family uh, to ascertain the impact of alcoholism on the marital relations to determine the ways in which alcoholism affects different aspects of children's life to find out the effects of alcoholism on the financial situation of the family. Okay, here what we can do is, for example, whenever we formulate objective, then a tool application can be performed based on the objectives of your study. For example, let's take this objectives to ascertain the impact of alcoholism on the marital relation. Okay, here uh, impact means naturally uh, we can use uh, regression. 
multiple uh, regression. Similarly, next one, to determine the ways in which alcoholism affects different aspects of children's life. Now, what we can do is we can use one way ANOVA. One way ANOVA. Next, to find out the effects of alcoholism on the financial uh, situation of the family effects. So, naturally, what we can do is we can use multiple regressions. Okay. Whenever you do, whenever you formulate research objective, immediately these things should come to your mind. That is a uh, which one should come to your mind? That is which statistical tool we are supposed to use. Okay. Uh, formulate objective. Okay. This is a way uh, by which objective can be generated. Finally, we, are, we have to double check whether you are really interested in the study. That is very, very important. You agree with the objective, whether you agree with the objectives, uh, whether you have adequate resources. Next one, you have a technical expertise to understand the study. This is very, very important. What is a technical expertise? Uh, technical expertise means normally, let's take uh, when you go to research, when you do a PhD or when you do research. What is the role of a guide? And the role of a guide is just they will give uh, guidance. There is a difference between gu guidance and handholding. They will give guidance. For example, they will they may say you are supposed to go through this paper. Then uh, this is the, this is this is the uh, base paper. Uh, then they can give some guidance. Okay, they can they can give guidance based on their expertise. At the same time, we should have some technical expertise. Technical expertise means what? At least you should have some knowledge in research methodology. We know all theoretical aspects of research methodology. We should have some. Uh, technically we should know some uh, we should know some concepts relating to uh, spss or uh, almost for example you are interested in uh, marketing if you would like to do research in marketing related project so naturally uh, you should have some expertise in spss almost or otherwise you should have some uh, for example you are interested in finance you should have some expertise in uh, eu software that is very very uh, that is very very important okay so this is relating to problem uh, formulation okay what is the next step next step is the uh, research design next one is a research design we have uh, another one thing that is none other than uh, review of literature then i will discuss the review of literature uh, later part uh, what is the next one next one is a research design what is a research design research design is nothing but it's a blueprint for the research Whenever we do, whenever we construct a home, normally what we are doing, we are doing some, we are we do some uh, blueprint. Uh, say for example, where kitchen should be uh, there, where dining room should be there, where, uh, where car parking should be there. Similarly, whenever we do research, first we have to do some kind of uh, research design. What is a research design? Research design is a framework or blueprint for conducting the marketing research project. Okay. Normally, let's take. Uh, normally, let's take research uh, project, research design. Normally, research design can be classified into two types. One may be exploratory research design. Another one may be conclusive research design. The other name of exploratory research design is non-conclusive research design. So, what is exploratory research design and what is conclusive research design? For example. When you do research for the first time, when you do research for the first time, that means no research has been conducted so far. In such circumstances, what we can do is we can do the exploratory research design. Exploratory research design. Okay. What is conclusive research design? Already some people have uh, conducted the research. Several review of literature is available. So in such circumstances, what we can do, you can do the conclusive research. The main objectives of exploratory research is explore some new thing. Explore some new thing. The main objectives of the main objectives of conclusive research is to draw some meaningful conclusion from the research. That is the main objectives of conclusive research. The conclusive research can be classified into two types. One is the descriptive research, another one is a casual research. What is the descriptive research? In case of descriptive research, the researchers doesn't have any control over the variable any control over the variable any control over the variable means what how many we might have seen there are two types of variable we have we have used in research one is independent variable another one is a dependent variable what is the independent variable independent variable are a cost oriented variable what is the term dependent variable dependent variable are the 
effort oriented variable independent variable or cost oriented variable dependent variables are effect oriented variable okay i say for example in case of descriptive research we don't have any control over the independent variable or dependent variable just we are describing what has happened what has happened in the research that is a descriptive research so descriptive research can be classified into two types one is a cross sectional research another one is a longitudinal research so what is the cross sectional research or what is meant by them longitudinal research what is cross sectional research in case of cross sectional research that means we are going to collect data from the only one participants only one at a time that is a cross sectional research for example comes to customer bank selection criteria adopted by the uh, mba students that will comes under cross sectional research for example you would like to study the impact of uh, dividend on the shareholding pattern that will comes under longitudinal research in case of longitudinal research every year we will collect data from the same persons our um, same person first year will collect data same data from the same organization second year third year fourth year fifth year sixth year when you when you do when you collect data from the same uh, respondents every year it will comes under longitudinal research all financial uh, research all finance related research will comes under longitudinal research all marketing uh, research will comes under cross sectional research so we should know what is cross sectional what is longitudinal research And then so what is a casual research casual research been short uh, in case of casual research we can find the influence of independent variable on dependent variable okay this is an example for casual research so what is a research design a research design is nothing but it's a it's a blueprint for it is a blueprint for research normally research design can be classified into two types one is exploratory research another one is a conclusive research so what is exploratory research what is the purpose of exploratory research the main purpose of exploratory research is to draw some meaningful uh, so to uh, say say for example to explore something when you do research for the first time naturally you are supposed to do the exploratory research okay so what is the aim of conclusive research to draw some meaningful conclusions descriptive uh, then conclusive research can be classified into two types one is a descriptive another one is a casual uh, research we have seen okay once you uh, do once we select wrong research design wrong research des uh, design again it's it you love a, a its impact on the statistical tool statistical tool application say for example this is an example for exploratory research exploratory research is conducted when the researcher does not know about the problem for example uh, normally this should be conducted at the outset of the problem once you know uh, this tools application is very very easy for example whenever uh, tomorrow we are going to discuss uh, statistical sem structural equation modeling okay so for example uh, if uh, well, you cannot apply the structural equation modeling for exploratory research because you don't know uh, because you don't know about the problem so in such circumstances you can use only the factor analysis exploratory factor analysis okay so uh, this is an exploratory research okay uh, say for example uh, similarly uh, descriptive research uh, for descriptive research can be used uh, for the marketing Uh, related uh, projects uh, okay casual research uh, to understand the influence of independent variable on dependent variable you might have seen the cross sectional and longitudinal uh, research okay this is an example for cross sectional research for example what is a cross sectional research we are we are going to conduct the same data you are going to collect the data from the particular respondents only one at a time that is that will comes under cross sectional uh, research design similarly what is a longitudinal design what is a longitudinal design means what when you collect data when you collect data from the uh, respondents when you collect data from the respondents over a different period of time over a different period of time means it will comes under it will comes under longitudinal uh, study i can give some example for example a uh, dividend uh, dividend history of the particular organization okay you would like to study the influence of you would like to study the influence of dividend on the uh, on the share market the price of the shares so you have identified 10 organizations organization x 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay. First year you have collected dividend data. Second year also you have collected dividend related data. Third year also you have collected dividend related. Third year also you have collected dividend related data. Okay. Now again next year you are going to collect the same data from the same organizations. Okay. So this will comes under longitudinal design. Okay. And next, say for example, whenever you do research, let's take the uh, comparison of basic research design. What are the objectives of exploratory research? The main objectives of exploratory research is discovery of ideas, new ideas and new insight. So let's take descriptive research. The main objectives of descriptive research is describe market characteristics or concerns. This is the main objectives. What is the casual research objective? Determine cause and effect relationship. That is the main objectives of uh, casual research. Let's take exploratory research. Exploratory research is a flexible one. Uh, whereas let's take descriptive research. Descriptive research is also, uh, for example, it's also it's not a flexible one. Whereas what about ca casual research? Say for example, in case of casual research, just you are going to manipulate independent variable effects on dependent variable. For example, I can give an example. You would like to do the research on the impact of service quality on customer loyalty. So impact variable will come under independent variable. Customer loyalty will come under dependent variable. So it will come under casual research design. You can do the experiment for collecting this data. Okay. So what are the various ways by which data can be collected in case of exploratory research? You can also collect this data normally um, expert survey, pilot study, case study, secondary data. Uh, normally, if you take a research, the entire uh, data collection process, and then uh, there are two types of research. One is a qualitative research, another one is a quantitative research. In case of qualitative research, then, then just we are going to collect data by uh, qualitative uh, methods. In some circumstances, this is possible. So all exploratory research might come under qualitative data collection method. Let's say quantitative data collection method. Descriptive research and casual research design will come under quantitative data collections method. Okay. Uh, similarly, let's take already we have discussed what is independent variable. What is independent variable? Independent variables are what is dependent, uh, independent variable or dependent variable we have seen already. Next one. And now we are going to formulate the questionnaire. Whenever we uh, formulate the questionnaire, uh, normally we are we are we, we are going to use four different types of scales. One is a nominal scale, another one is ordinal scale, another one is interval scale, another one is a ratio of scales. For example, you might have seen there are four scales has been used in formulation of the questionnaire. What is a nominal scale? In case of nominal scale, only two options should be given. For example, what is the purpose of nominal scale? The main objectives of nominal scale is identification purpose. The main objectives of nominal scale is identification uh, purpose. Okay. For example, do you have a car? What's your uh, then gender of the respondents? These things will come under nominal scale. What is the ordinal scale? That is in case of nominal scale, just to be a, there is a number has been assigned. A number, just to be are assigning some number for identification purpose. So what is ordinal scale in case of ordinal scale? For example, I can give an example for ordinal scale. Uh, for example, uh, mark secured by the student, mark secured by the students. For example, one student, one uh, student have secured 100 marks. One student have secured 100 marks. He will be ranked as number one. Another one student might secure 80 marks. He will be ranked as number two. Another one student might have secured uh, 50 marks. He will be ranked as number three. He will be ranked as number three. Okay. Here, see, uh, first students have secured 100 marks. Second students have secured 80 marks. Third students have secured uh, 50 marks. The difference between first and second is only 20. The difference between second and third is, say for example, 80 and 50, 30. So this is the beauty of ordinal scale. So in case of ordinal scale, the difference is need not be equal. The difference is need not be equal. When you ask ranking related questions, ranking related questions, 
all ranking related questions will comes under ordinal scale next one is the interval scale what is interval scale yeah, for example uh, what's your opinion about coffee uh, excellent marvelous wonderful for example normally we might ask five point scale in our question as excellent uh, means five uh, very good means four good means three uh, okay means two not okay means one see here yeah the difference between five minus four five excellent means we will assign five uh, very good means four five minus four what is the difference the difference is one four minus three what is the difference the difference is one uh, three minus two what is the difference the difference is one two minus one what is the difference the difference is one here the difference among the difference between the variable difference between the measurement will be equal so this is the beauty of interval scale for example if you want to do any analysis i am talking from the analysis point of view analysis point of view uh, if you want to do the uh, parametric test that is parametric test if any test is considering mean as a base so for example when you do uh, if you have collected your data if you have collected your data by way of uh, five point scale you can do any kind of analysis normally if you take any questionnaire if you take your questionnaire your questionnaire consists of three important components your questionnaire consists of three important components the first part of the questionnaire talks about demographic profile of the variable second part of the questionnaire talks about independent variable third part of the questionnaire talks about dependent variable let's take independent variable you can have nominal and ordinal scale nominal and ordinal scale in your independent variable let's take uh, independent uh, demographic let's take independent and dependent variable let's take independent and dependent variable it is all it is advisable to have uh, or it is uh, you should have collected all independent and dependent variable by using five point scale if you do this you can do any kind of analysis for example whether you can do the uh, tick test definitely it is possible you can do the one sample tick test you can uh, do the uh, uh, tick test or you can do you can do the paired sample tick test you can do the one way ANOVA you can do the two way ANOVA you can do the MONOVA you can do the MONOCOVA ANOCOVA conjoint analysis cluster analysis discriminant analysis confirmatory factor analysis you can do even exploratory analysis can be done you can do multiple regression correlation correspondent analysis you can do any kind of analysis when it is possible if you have if you have collected your data through five point scale so normally so we should keep these things in our mind so next one is a ratio scale what is a ratio scale when one information is expressed in terms of another it is said to be ratio scale so we should know about this scale this information then only uh, let's say say for example during the uh, analysis stage it's very easy okay these are the scale okay next one next one is a sampling design process okay once we do the once we prepare the questionnaire once we prepare the questionnaire normally what is the next step next step is we should do the sampling design okay sampling so first we have what is the during the sampling design what is what we are supposed to do is first we have to define the population whom we are going to collect the data define the population uh, for example let's take you would like to collect data from the bank customer means bank customer is your sampling population bank customer is sampling population okay uh, so say what is, so what is normally what is sampling we cannot go and collect the data from the all the respondent so in case of sampling just we can take some samples we can take some uh, samples based on the samples we can draw some meaningful uh, inference okay so first one uh, first we have to define the population next we have to determine the sampling framework for example we should have a database about the customer how we can get this database we should have some database how we can get this database we can get this database from the bank for example but in practice whether we can get customer database from the bank that is not that is not possible but uh, scientifically if you can conduct data if you have a sampling frame that is a well and good otherwise if you don't have any sampling framework again you can change the methodology sampling methodology 
you don't uh, in such circumstances you can use only the non probability sampling method non probability uh, in such circumstances you should have a non probability sampling method okay next one uh, next one is you should select the sampling techniques uh, once you have identified this next you should select the sampling techniques okay there are two types of sampling techniques are available one is random sampling another one is non random sampling okay so what is random sampling and what is non random sampling in case of random sampling all the population all the population units will have a equal opportunity of being selected as a sample that is a uh, so what is non random sampling in case of uh, non random sampling all the population units will not have a equal opportunity of being selected as a sample okay we are going to discuss what are the different types of sampling uh, method next what you are, what we are supposed to do is next uh, you should you should select the sample size for example uh, how many samples you are supposed to collect so that uh, it will represent true and fair view of the entire uh, sample that is very that is very very uh, important that is very very that is very very important okay sample size okay next one next what is the next one execute the sampling process you should execute the sampling process i will explain these steps one by one at the end if you have any doubt or clarification you can ask your questions by way of asking questions only we can clarify several doubts for example if sample is not representative then the conclusion is not valid for example you are, you are going to select some sample from the population if the sample is not representative then the conclusion is not valid for example let us take this example there is a there is a person he is named as truman he is truman he is truman actually uh, truman uh, there is a magazine called the chicago daily tribune this magazine says this person will be defeated in the elections But, but finally, he won in the election. How come this is possible? Only because of improper sampling selection. Improper sample selection. For example, this magazine, this is Chicago Daily Tribune, they have they have identified uh, one sampling frame. That is, they took telephone directly. In their 1948, who has a telephone in their home? They will be considered as a rich. They will be considered as a rich. So this study considers only one part of the uh, segment. One part of the segment. This study ignored. This study ignored the rest of the uh, rest, uh, rest of the uh, persons. So as a result, what will happen? The result is totally changed. The result is totally changed. So let us take. Whenever we do uh, sampling technique, whenever we do sampling uh, sampling. we are uh, there are two types of sampling one is probability another one is non probability sampling method one, so let's take a probability sampling in case of what is probability sampling in case of probability sampling all the population units all the population units will have a equal opportunity of being selected as a sample that is an example for probability sampling method what is non probability sampling method in case of non probability sampling method all the population units all the population units will not have a equal opportunity of being selected as a uh, samples so naturally let's take under probability sampling method uh, we can use simple random sampling systematic sampling stratified random sampling uh, cluster sampling other some then uh, under uh, non probability sampling method convenient sampling judgmental sampling quota sampling snowball sampling method has been used so we have to select the sampling method according to our requirement according to our uh, according to our requirement so just uh, i can give example for convenient sampling say for example let's say there are five group of students are there five uh, the c a b c d e uh, okay five respondents are there okay say for example instead of saying five respondents a is one city b is another one city c is another one city D is another one city. E is another one city. Okay. Say for example, you are supposed to collect data. So you just imagine that you are there at uh, city D. You are there at city D. So what you can do is you can collect data uh, from sixteenth, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Here, let's take uh, in case of convenient sampling, 
the data has been collected according to the convenience of the researchers according to the convenience of the researchers here let's take uh, for example uh, none of the persons none of the sample has been selected from this city a none of the sample has been selected from b none of the sample has been selected from c none of the sample has been selected from e this is the beauty of the convenience sampling method similarly let's take judgmental sampling so what is a judgmental sampling judgmental sampling is also another form of convenience sampling in which population elements are selected population elements are selected based on the judgment of the researchers based on the judgment of the researchers okay say for example uh, this is an example for uh, judgmental uh, sampling for example the researchers consider uh, considers group b c and e to be a typical and convenient uh, say for example b c uh, e okay so from b uh, then the researcher has selected 8 and 10 from the group c the researcher has selected 11 and 13 from the group e the researcher has selected 22 and 24 here here also no no elements are selected from group uh, groups a and d so this is an example for judgmental sampling similarly we can also use snowball uh, snowball sampling for example in case of snowball sampling for example uh, for example you would like to identify uh, you'd like to do research on cigarette uh, you would like to identify cigarette uh, consumption uh, people cigarette uh, consumption people one minute one minute sir sir i am in a meeting i will call you after uh, 12 30 sir okay 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 thank you sir thank you okay okay thank you sir. okay uh, sorry for the inconvenience okay <clears throat> so let's take uh, so in case of uh, snowball in case of uh, snowball uh, sampling for example uh, you would like to do the research on cigarette smoking uh, habit of students just imagine that you don't know the you don't know who will consume then whether we can ask these questions directly to the students that is not possible that is not uh, that is not possible in such circumstances what we can do is we can uh, identify any one of the students from the students we can uh, collect data so from the uh, another one students then we can collect the same data say for example this is an example for snowball sampling say for example elements two and nine are selected randomly from group a two and nine are selected randomly from group a and b okay uh, plus okay and randomly uh, a and b elements two uh, element two refers elements 12 and uh, 13 elements 9 refers 18 there is say for so how many samples are there one two three four five five samples are there in the snowball sampling method okay similarly uh, there are several samples are there so random sampling non-random sampling cluster uh, sampling okay so uh, finally we have to decide only one thing under we should know under what circumstances uh, we should select probability sampling and non-probability sampling method. For example, let's take if your nature of research is a exploratory research. If you are if your nature of research is a exploratory research, what you can do is you are supposed to select only the uh, non-probability sampling method. Okay. So for which at least we need uh, for what is exploratory research. What is conclusive research? Already we have seen what is exploratory research and what is conclusive research. Okay. Say for example, uh, when you select non-probability sampling, when you select non-probability sampling, then sampling error will be something higher. Non-probability sampling. When you select non-probability sampling, sampling error will be something higher. Okay. When you select probability sampling, when you select probability sampling, sampling error uh, will, will also be very low. But similarly, let's take population. For example, your population is a homogeneous. Sometimes your population may be homogeneous. Sometimes your population may be heterogeneous. For example, when your population is a homogeneous in such circumstances, you can select non-probability sampling method. When your population is a heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous, 
it means a circumstances. For example, it is advisable to select only probability sampling method. As far as statistical application is concerned, uh, probability sampling uh, is the best one for uh, statistical purpose. Okay. So, so these are the various uh, factors are to be considered while choosing probability and non-probability, probability and non-probability uh, sampling. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, let's take uh, whenever we do sampling, just a minute, I think. Okay. Finally, what we should do is we should know how to develop the hypothesis. Uh, normally, let's take hypothesis. What is meant by the term hypothesis? Hypothesis is nothing but it's a tentative assumption about the population. It is nothing but tentative assumption about the population. There are two uh, um, there are two types of hypothesis. One is a null hypothesis. Another one is a alternate hypothesis. What is null hypothesis? Null hypothesis. May, null hypothesis is a statement of the status quo. That means, uh, for example, the null hypothesis says there is no uh, significant difference among independent and dependent variable. What is alternate hypothesis? Alternate hypothesis uh, says there is a significant influence on independent and dependent variable. As a researcher, as a researcher, then say for example, what is our intention? Our intention is to reject uh, null hypothesis. For example, if one plant is fed club soda for one month and another plant is uh, is fed plain water, there will be no difference in growth between two plants. This is an example for uh, null hypothesis. For example, we, we have two plants. Uh, for one plant, we, we gave uh, soda uh, for one month. For another plant, just we are administering water, but uh, the both plants growth is something uh, almost equal. There is no difference. This is the uh, null hypothesis statements. What is the alternate hypothesis statement? There is a significant uh, difference. Similar, okay. Researcher always wants to disprove the null hypothesis. Okay. A null hypothesis. This is a meaning for the term hypothesis. Okay. So uh, with this, I would like to wind up the first session. What I can, what uh, my question is, uh, I have some idea in my mind. If you could ask, uh, if you could ask some doubt, I am ready to clarify your doubt so that when you uh, leave from the conference, when you leave from this workshop, you will have some takeaway. You can ask any kind of uh, queries. I will clarify your uh, doubt. So, or otherwise, whatever you are saying, that is okay for me. When you say you continue the session, it's not it's not a problem for me. I will take uh, statistical tool applications or otherwise. Let's take. Uh, we are supposed to discuss professional design and review of literature. When you ask or if you if you can pose some queries, uh, then so I will take your queries one by one. I will clarify all your doubts with some examples. So choice is uh, yours. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning. Ah, uh, sir, uh, the type one error, null hypothesis, the type one error. The difference between alpha one minus alpha, sir. Yes. Can you explain this? Sir? Yes, yes, I will explain. I will explain. Uh, you ah. can. Okay, okay. I will explain, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Some background noise. Okay. Now we can do the idea of temperature. Okay. Uh, is there any test to identify sampling error? Okay. I will explain. Any other uh, queries? Okay, kindly, sir, uh, we can have uh, five minutes uh, break. Okay, this five minutes break is not to leave from the uh, session. You can pose your queries. I will clarify your doubt one by one. Then I will uh, discuss the rest of the part. Okay, uh, somebody told, sir, how we can do the review of literature. I will, uh, I will explain. Is there any test to identify the sampling error? I will, I will, uh, I will explain. Plus type one, then uh, type uh, type one plus okay type one error. What is type one error? I will I'll, I will explain. Okay, after the break, just shall we have five minutes break? So the, during the five minutes break time, you can post your questions in the chat box. Yes. Sure, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, participants. And we will be back by five minutes of interval time. Thank you. If you have any doubt, you just uh, type there. Ma'am, we can have five minutes break. Let the guests come again. You can also go for a break, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Let it all be inside the group, ma'am. Don't come out of the meet. We can join. Okay, ma'am.
Okay. Again, I am welcoming all for the next uh, session. Okay. Uh, whether my voice is audible? Yes, sir. It's audible, sir. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Say, for example, let's take, I will clarify your doubts one by one. Okay. Uh, how we can do the uh, review of uh, literature? This is a uh, first question. Okay. Normally, let's take, uh, if you want to do the review of literature, uh, then uh, even review of literature is the biggest, big ocean. That's are my experience with regard to review of literature. Okay. How to write review of literature. What is the main objectives of review writing review of literature? The main objectives of writing review of literature is to identify the research gap. Whenever we do research, there will be a research gap. For example, uh, so the main objectives of writing review of literature is to identify the research gap. That is the main objectives of writing review of literature. How to write review of literature? At the, for example, how to write review of literature? First, we should write latest review. For example, uh, 2020, uh, 22 means, uh, for example, now you are going to submit your research uh, thesis. First, you should write 2021 review, then 2020 review, 2019 review, 2018, 2017. You should write your review of literature one by one, latest year, 2021, 2020, one year by year you should write. Uh, similarly, uh, I have seen some uh, some of the scholars. They may do review of literature from 2017. There four years gap will be there. So this is not correct. Why? Right? Because four years some research might have been conducted. So your research gap may be invalid. Next one, when you should do the review of literature? When you should do the review of literature? Before commencement of your research, you should do the review of literature. At the end of the study, for example, at the end of the study, you can do the uh, you can do the review of uh, literature. Uh, so, at the end of the study, for example, you will write analysis and discussion part. Normally, in, if you take uh, previous uh, research uh, projects, simply they will write only conclusion. Then they will write uh, uh, say, for example, suggestions. Now, this is totally different. Now, you are supposed to write analysis and discussion now you are supposed to write analysis and uh, discussion part what is analysis and what is analysis and discussion? you might have used some statistical tool from the statistical tool uh, you might have identified five important dimensions of service quality so you can compare your study with previous studies that is very very important this is my study findings my study finding is uh, in uh, supporting with other study for example other study your study, what's your study findings, what's other study findings, you can also compare, you can also contrast your uh, findings, your study finding with other study findings, okay, for which we need, uh, we, we have some review of literature. Normally, a review of literature should be written in the past tense, not uh, present tense. We should not use the same word for writing review of literature. For example, we can use uh, different words, for example, ex studied, uh, ex studied, an attempt has been made by the uh, so and so to study the to study or uh, you can use different uh, different uh, verbs uh, that is very very uh, that is very very important next one is for a next one say for example uh, whenever we would like to uh, uh, do the review of literature first we should know how to write review of literature that is very very important for example in case of review of literature we can write objectives what is the main objectives of your study uh, next what you can do is then findings you can take uh, if you take the research paper if you take the research paper abstracts will be there abstracts will be there plus uh, conclusions will be there abstracts and conclusion in the abstract part of the research paper you can know the objectives of the study at the same time, if you take the conclusion part of your uh, conclusion part, you can know the conclusion. For example, the findings of your studies. So you can take these two things. For example, I can give an example. X made an attempt. X made an attempt to study the relationship between service quality and customer loyalty. This study found that there is a significant influence on tangibility, reliability, responsiveness on customer loyalty 
So this is the way, this is the way by which you can write review of literature. Now people might ask another question, sir, how many sentences we, we can have in review of literature? Normally review of literature should be written in at least five to six sentences, not more than five to uh, six uh, sentences. Okay, so I have seen some, some persons, uh, some scholars, they might review of literature, they will copy the entire uh, abstract and they might copy the entire conclusion as it is. That is not a review of literature. What is a review of literature? Review of literature means what? Just you are, uh, you are, uh, you are proving, uh, you are indirectly convincing the audience that none of this study has been conducted. The study has been conducted. So none of the study has been conducted in my part. So at the end of the review, right? At the end of the review of literature, you should know the connective. Uh, you should know the connectivity. You should write like this. For example, even though even though several study has been conducted, even though several study has been conducted all over the world, most of the study, most of the study has been conducted uh, in uh, Western countries. In India, one in in India only few studies has been conducted. In India only few study has been conducted. Therefore, therefore the researcher is intended. The researcher is intended to the study by way of uh, doing uh, by way of studying this topic this is the way by which you can write the review of uh, review of literature i can give one model review of uh, one model uh, review of literature uh, for for your uh, reference for example let's take just a minute Whether you can able to see the uh, word file, any one of the participants can respond. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, okay. So, say for example, uh, this is a uh, way by which you can do the review of literature. For example, let's take uh, this researcher, one researcher uh, did a review of literature from 2010 to 2021 and then he has identified some journals for example some articles uh, first one asia specific journal of marketing and logistic uh, he has identified behavior and information technology finally let's take here let's take uh, he has identified uh, 209 journals that is more than 200 and more than 200 uh, uh, articles he has identified uh, let's take all these articles then say for example let's take uh, marketing intelligence and planning he has identified 20 uh, journals now what he is supposed to do is he has to write a uh, review of literature for 200 uh, journals out of 200 some some journals may be some uh, some research might be relevant some research may be totally irrelevant you can remove your irrelevant one this is the way you can convince the convince your uh, researchers even when you go for viva wise exams naturally people might ask the questions but so uh, then how many journals you have identified from which journal you have identified say for example when, then which uh, journal is relevant to your area in such circumstances at least you can convince the uh, convince the people by way of uh, uh, putting this uh, table like this so this is the way Similarly, let's take and then I'm supposed to do another one thing.
okay now whenever we do uh, review of literature okay uh, first you should uh, read the review paper there is a research paper whether you can see the word file now author industry country sample size yes yes sir okay first you should write the author name author name industry in which industry in which country sample size what should be the sample size what should be the sampling unit what is the sampling method data collection method research method then you should write the analysis which statistical analysis so say for example when you prepare table like this say for example this is a table prepared by one of the uh, researchers at the end say for example let's take country taiwan uk usa new zealand uh, usa uh, let's take at the end of the at the end you can write the connecting word even though several study has been conducted all over the world most of the study has been conducted in western perspective in india only few study has been conducted therefore the researcher is intended to fill the uh, intended to conduct the study by way of doing this uh, study okay this is the way by which you can write review of uh, review of literature okay similarly let's take for uh, writing uh, review of literature whenever you write review of literature first you should you should have some idea for example uh, whether first you should establish why your topic is very important outlining the past present history there are some methodologies are there once you follow this methodology it's very simple for example just i can give one example for this establishing why your research topic is important just imagine that you are taking bank service quality you can write like this bank service quality is the main or leading or primary or major cause of uh, then bank service quality are the common or useful or critical part of bank service quality are among the most widely used or commonly discussed or well known or well documented or widespread or commonly investigated type of or bank service quality is recognized as being believed to be wide considered to be the most important it is well known generally accepted common okay so this is the way for example this is the way by which you can write some connecting word in review of literature for example let's take indicating gap in research uh, research gap how you can write the research gap few researchers have addressed the problem next uh, next sentence what otherwise you can write few researchers have addressed the issue few researchers have addressed the questions of you can write like this our previous work has only focused on our previous work uh, been limited to previous work failed to address a basic common or fundamental or critical or major issues of or you can also use this major uh, so uh, say for example x is still poor and, uh, poorly or not widely understood this is the Okay. Once these things, you might ask, how we can get this kind of things? Once you go through the journal, or once you go through the uh, articles, you can get this kind of uh, information. Okay. So uh, kindly, uh, say for example, kindly refer emeraldinsight.com journals. Journals published in emeraldinsight.com. You will get a lot of insight. Then. Uh, this information has been collected from the emerald uh, insight.com okay so this is a few information about a uh, review of a uh, few information about the uh, review of uh, literature okay even uh, for uh, for information and just a minute normally with the help of uh, what is a review of literature a review of literature is a uh, it is a compilation of facts related to the particular uh, topic okay say for example let's take with the help of review of literature what you can get you can get uh, what has been set what has been set you can also get key writers who are all the key writers you can also get prevailing theories 
what are the prevailing theories and hypotheses you can also uh, get appropriate and useful methods and uh, methodology normally whenever you do uh, a research proposal research project research paper thesis you should do the uh, review of uh, literature so say for example let's take uh, whenever we do a review of literature what are the sources you can collect this data from emeraldinsight.com epsco uh, host jk or uh, some peer sharing sources are there okay so this is the basic information about review of literature when should i do the review of literature at the beginning when you start looking at the problem again in the middle once your work is under way uh, next towards the end when you have result when you have result you should do the review of literature okay how should i select the paper to read how should i select the paper to read ask your guide first you should ask your guide the guide might give some basic uh, idea relating to your base paper then normally survey or review article is the good starting point when you, there are normally articles if you take some research paper uh, some uh, sometimes you will have only review of literature as the articles so this review paper could be the a good starting point try to identify the key papers key paper means there is a base paper okay uh, next what you can do you can also follow the key papers at the end of the key paper at the end of the key papers let's take the reference you copy the reference and you can paste then you so that you can get the latest uh, paper uh, for example what to do if i find too few sources discuss with your experts or guide look for later topics synonymous broaden the scope of topic uh, then narrow back look harder for example what to do if i find too many sources too many sources okay so scale down your uh, research then restrict by years you take only the uh, recent years restrict by source only two most well known uh, journals in the field uh, restrict by topic again expert help is very very uh, important okay so normally what is the review of literature should do review of literature should compare and contrast different authors views on the topic of research and then uh, group those authors who have drawn similar conclusions okay find out areas of disagreement between the authors so you can get this from the review of literature okay say for example whenever you do uh, review of literature when you read a paper uh, research paper you you develop some you should have some you should create one table like this author name year industry research method learning remarks so you should you should uh, note down your uh, review of uh, your review of literature that is very very important okay uh, normally let's take the people Uh, we should whenever we do the research at least we should do at least one or two hours time for doing the research then only our research could be very excellent research uh, we should not do the research just for uh, name sake or we should not do the research for only 10 days that is not uh, that is not the correct way uh, still people are there say for example if you take any research paper for writing review of literature what you are looking for you have to find it for example what research area uh, the paper falls under okay you can get this information from the title page and abstract page what problem does the paper attempts to solve so you can get this information from the title title page plus uh, abstract introduction and problem uh, say for example what is the related work why it why uh, is not sufficient you can get this information from the introduction page what contribution does the paper claim you can get this information from title abstract uh, uh, abstract and introduction and conclusion page how does the paper solves the problem how does the paper solves the problem you can get this information from the introduction page how does the other defends the solution you can get this information from the introduction what category of paper is this you can get this information from introduction and uh, introduction and uh, heading finally let's take whenever you write a review of literature you can use this kind of uh, verbs argue assert assume challenge claim content contradict describe dispute 
emphasize, establish, examine. Okay, we should not use the same word uh, again and again. That is not a that is not a correct uh, one as far as review of literature is uh, concerned. Okay. Uh, similarly, uh, we can do review of literature. Uh, okay. Uh, sir, is there any test to identify the sampling error? Okay. I will explain what is meant by the term uh, sampling error and what is non-sampling error. Okay. If you take sampling, normally let's take what is meant by the term uh, sampling error. Uh, we are going to collect, we are, we are going to collect some data from the uh, populations. Okay. For example, uh, just imagine that uh, you, have, you have calculated average mark for your entire class. Uh, what is average mark of entire class? Average mark of entire class is 80 marks. Just you would like to take some sample from the population. So what is your sample population? Only 10. Okay. Uh, what is the, from the sample population, you you come to the conclusion that average mark of the uh, entire uh, this sample is 40. So what is the difference? And the difference is 30. This 30 is said to be sampling error. What is sampling error? Sampling error is the, is the difference between um, uh, population and sample statistics. This is the meaning for the term sampling error. There is no statistical test with regard to sampling error. But at the same time, whenever we do uh, multiple regression or some other things, error will be there. Error, error, error will be there. Okay. So if if your data has more error means that means what is the interpretation? Your data is not that much good. That means your data has more error. Okay. So uh, normally this error can be classified into two types. One is sampling, one is sampling error, another one is non-sampling error. What is sampling error? If any error occurred out of sampling, out of usage of sampling or administration of sampling method, this will be termed as a sampling error. What is non-sampling error? Sometimes uh, you you are uh, you will have a non-sampling error only because of this. Say for example, let's take uh, you have you might have distributed the questionnaire. The respondent might not understand the questionnaire. So the naturally, what will happen? Uh, so non-sampling there may be error. So now you might ask this question: How this error can be reduced? This error can be reduced by some methods. For example, uh, you have developed the questionnaire. Normally, questionnaire should be developed. Questionnaire should be developed based on the objectives of the uh, study. Once you have developed the questionnaire, what you are supposed to do is you should uh, send this questionnaire. Uh, you should do the content validity of the questionnaire. You should do the content validity of the questionnaire. What is the content validity? Content validity means you should uh, you should appoint some expert as a uh, expert. Then the researcher is supposed to explain the questionnaires, explain the objectives and questionnaires. So based on the explanation, the researchers, the, the experts will say this question is related to this. This question is not related to this. Finally, uh, you can before administering questionnaire to the respondent, you can do the pilot study. What is the pilot study before administering questionnaire to the respondent? You can do one. Uh, you can administer. You can give the questionnaire to some other potential respondents so that you can avoid non-sampling uh, error. Okay. Next one. Uh, examples for uh, alternative. Uh, example for alternative hypothesis. Then type one error and type two uh, error. Okay. I will explain what is alternate uh, hypothesis. Uh, and type 1 and uh, type 2 error. Okay, let's take first. I will explain what is alternate uh, hypo, alternate hypothesis. Okay, let's take. Okay, say for example, uh, research. This is a research uh, hypothesis. For example, old workers are more loyal to a company. This is one hypothesis. Okay, old workers are more loyal to their company. Next one, this is a null hypothesis. This is a null hypothesis. That means you might have selected the workers, uh, new workers and old workers. Out of the workers, sometimes old workers may be loyal. That means what? New workers are not loyal. This is your uh, contention. This is your uh, statement. So old workers are more loyal to the company. Then this is a null hypothesis. 
So what is the alternate hypothesis? Old workers are not more loyal to the company. This is the alternate hypothesis. So what is the main objectives of null hypothesis? What is the null hypothesis is there is no start, there is no uh, significant relationship between independent and independent variable. And then, then what is the alternate hypothesis? The alternate hypothesis says there is a significant influence on independent and dependent uh, variable. This is an example for this is an example for alternate uh, hypothesis. Alternate hypothesis. Okay. Say for example, the alternate hypothesis states that the new theory is true. There are new standards. The system is out of control. Okay. For example, let's take. I will. I can give an example for alternate hypothesis. Suppose floor package by a manufacturer is sold by weight, and particular size of package is supposed to be average forty ounces. Suppose the manufacturer wants to test to determine whether the package process is out of control as determined by the weight of floor packages. The null hypothesis, uh, okay, I, I will explain uh, this in simple uh, simple example. For example, uh, whenever you would like to introduce some new system in the organization, when you will introduce new system in the organization, there is a problem in the existing system there is a problem in the existing system for example uh, if there is what the existing system there is no significant difference existing system is good means you will not introduce any new uh, system uh, for example uh, let's take uh, let's take null hypothesis null hypothesis states null condition exists there is nothing new happening uh, happening the old theory is still true. The old standard is correct and the control. What is the, uh, say for example, what is the alternate uh, hypothesis? Alternate hypothesis says, alternate hypothesis says, uh, this alternate hypothesis is, is one in which some difference or effect is expected. Accepting the alternate hypothesis will lead to changes in the opinion or actions. I can give an example. Uh, when we ask who you who and then uh, uh, who is uh, who has uh, who is knowledgeable, male or female, when we ask this question, always there will be a, a controversy. Somebody might say male is uh, always uh, male is better, female is better. So I have some idea. For example, male is better or female is better. Okay. So uh, uh, on what basis I can conclude? This is my assumption. My assumption is null hypothesis. So I am collecting some data. Finally, I am doing some hypothesis testing. Based on the hypothesis testing, I am accepting my opinion or my, I am rejecting my opinion. For example, uh, I have some idea uh, that male uh, have knowledgeable, but the study itself says female is more knowledgeable. In such circumstances, what I am supposed to do is I should change my opinion. This female is better. I should change this opinion, my opinion. And so this is an example for null hypothesis. The main objectives of uh, hypothesis uh, testing is to reject null hypothesis, to accept alternate hypothesis. This, uh, this is the main objectives of uh, null and alternate hypothesis. The researcher always wants to disprove which one null hypothesis. Okay. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody, and then one of the participants is asking some uh, uh, doubts relating to uh, participant with them. Uh, one sample type one and type two error. Okay, what is a type one and type two error? Normally, whenever we do uh, hypothesis hypothesis testing, there may be a error. There may be an error. And this error can be termed as type one error and type two error. What is type? one error a type one error is committed by rejecting true null hypothesis true for example the null hypothesis may be true but you may be rejecting with the type one error the null hypothesis is true but the researcher decides that it is not this is a type one error what is a type one error type one error means rejecting true null hypothesis okay so that means uh, null hypothesis is true, but you are rejecting null hypothesis, then you are accepting alternate alternate hypothesis. Okay. But what is a type 2 error? 
a type 2 error is committed when business researchers fails to reject a false null hypothesis okay in this case null hypothesis is false but decision is made when sometimes what is type 2 error null hypothesis may be false but you might accept null hypothesis this is a type 1 error and this is a type 1 and type 2 error okay and next question in what way sample representing population can be uh, chosen okay i will explain is there uh, if the sample size is influenced how we select the sample size okay i will explain uh, okay uh, okay i will uh, explain say for example uh, let's take sample uh, okay i will explain and so how to select the sample size in what way sample representing population can be chosen okay let's take uh, let's take uh, sample uh, sample size just a minute you are asking